Welcome everybody to Nigu TV. My name is Eric Reese. I get the honor of being the CEO of the Jesse Reese Foundation and more importantly, Jesse's daddy. And we have got an exciting, exciting episode of chatting with Cade because Johnny Stanton is our guest. Hi, Johnny. Hi guys. How are you, buddy? I'm great. Good to see you guys. Good seeing you. So for people that don't know who Johnny Stanton is, who do you play for? What's your position? Give us a little bit about who Johnny is. Uh, I am uh, a fullback for the Cleveland Browns. Um, I signed with them in January. I'm previously with the Minnesota Vikings, as you can see with the picture behind Cade right now. <laughs> um, I uh, graduated from UNLV after spending some time at Saddleback College in the University of Nebraska, and I'm an Orange County native. Went going to um, the Reese's uh, uh, Alumni School, Santa Margarita Catholic. Um, so that's uh, kind of uh, my my backstory a little bit. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for all you do. I know that you not only come to the Joy Factory and help stuff Joy Jars, but you love to deliver the jars to kids and help them smile and stuff. I'm sure you'll talk about that. So I don't want to lose I and mean, take any of Cade's thunder because he's, uh, he's ready to chat. So Cade, you're up, buddy. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, what first drew you to need you? What first drew me to need you? Um, so I had known a very, very, very little uh, about Nigu when I was in high school. Um, I, I think after I left Santa Margarita, it wasn't really, um, did it, it, I, I didn't really know anything about it, to, to be completely honest. As I kind of went forward, um, I, when I graduated, I knew that I wanted to get involved with a charity organization. I wanted to be able to give back, um, especially somewhere that was local, because I had just gotten injured with the Vikings. I was going to be spending a lot of time at home and I thought, okay, well, what better time to finally get involved with something that I really am passionate about. Uh, and that's when I kind of remembered like, Oh, like the Jesse Reese foundation is like, you know, pretty much next door to me. <laughs> um, so I, you know, I found, I found the Nigu Instagram. Um, I found out that there was going to be a, just in the next couple of days, there was going to be a little joy drive that was happening at um, Santa Margarita Toyota. I think it was Toyota, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, I just showed up um, trying to see what I could do. I was still on my little scooter because uh, my ankle was still very broken. Um, <laughs> but um, that's kind of like ever since then, um, getting to meet you there, Eric, was, was a great experience. And um, just, uh, I think I met you there, right? That's, yeah. Um, that's kind of what, what started it off and then kind of getting to know everybody else in the office and getting to meet you, Cade, you know, just I think less than a month later, over at the golf tournament, um, hanging out with Corey and uh, your grandpa. And yeah, it was um, a really fun couple months, or, you know, right there at the beginning. And then just being able to keep that, keep that going over the next, what, almost two years now. Um, I, I, you know, can only hope that it lasts so much longer. Yeah, uh, it, I also see you out there like drawing with like Jordan and stuff. It's really fun to see you out there too. Yeah, it's, I love being able to see you. You know, I haven't been able to do it for a while since since quarantine started. But yeah. uh, I loved every morning when I got to see you there and your parents and um, getting to see you, you know, throw, do some drills. And uh, it was, I, I was always trying to fight to the front of the line, to like the receiver line. So whenever you were, uh, whenever you were about to throw, I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's get this. Kids up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was so fun. Yeah. Uh, well, first, um, I wear my Nigu um, wristband. Uh, um, when I look at it during my workouts in school, it helps me to fight on. Why do you, you wear yours? Well, I got mine right here. Um, it's funny. I think, um, I think Eric, you guys had to order like <laughs> extra large sizes so that I'd be able to have some and also like hand out to other people whose, whose wrists are a little bit bigger than yeah, the one. NFL linemen don't wear small wristbands. Right. <laughs> so um, I know that you guys gave me a bag of like 200 of the extra large ones. This is only my second one, which I'm actually pretty happy about. Um, but I, I think uh, whenever, whenever I wear it, um, which is always, but whenever I'm like on the field and kind of look down and notice it, I'm like, you know, like if I'm tired. If I'm feeling like, uh, I don't really need to finish this last set or, you know, I really don't need to like pay attention during this meeting. I kind of got, get reminded like, okay, no, this is, this is, there's so much more, than just this and there's so many people that are dealing with so much more that you know just being a little bit tired is nothing compared to you know the stuff that you you fought through the kid, stuff that the kids fight through every day so it gives me a reminder i'm like this is nothing i'm getting to do something that i really really love and that um i can honor 
those fighting fighting just you know right alongside me and i have the honor of being able to fight alongside them so great yeah. Yeah, like, I remember, like, one time I went to, like, a football, um, like, thing, I think it was, like, Buffalo or somewhere, mm -hmm. and for, um, for, like, Josh Allen, and we had to, like, buy, like, extra large wristbands because they were, like, all linemen would probably want some, and they can't fit into the normal size. Yeah. Do you get excited when you see on TV, like, some football players or baseball players and stuff wearing them on, like, athletes, professional athletes? Yeah, we paused it. We paused the TV. Yeah, it, and you got. I mean, you got all the Sports Illustrated covers behind Eric, and getting to see the see the the wristband. Yeah. Of Sports Illustrated. Yeah, I know. I get excited when I see it. Uh, and, um, tell us about your um the hospital visit. So, um, I think my first one was down in San Diego. Um, we went to um, what's Radio. the name? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rady uh, Hospital and got to visit um, some uh, courageous kids down there. Um, it's, it's being 100% honest, it's, it's a little bit difficult at first because you don't really know what to expect. It's a situation that, you know, I have no experience in. Um, I don't know what these, these kids are going through. But mm -hmm. then I realized, like, just, just being there and being a friendly face, you know, there's zero chance that any, any of them know who I am. Um, like, I'm wearing my Minnesota shirt at the time thinking that like, you know, okay, maybe this will give me a little bit of credibility, but <laughs> like they yeah. don't, care, you know? Um, and uh, I think one of the coolest moments when I was there was um, getting to see one of the kids who had just come out of surgery. He was still kind of waking up and um, his parents were right there. And we started talking about like, he's, he's really into space. Um, and I got, I was actually, let me grab these pair of shoes that I was wearing. But if you will let me get off screen for just one second. Go um, for it. This is Cade's. This is Cade's <laughs> channel, so he can do what he wants. Yeah. I was wearing these shoes, like NASA shoes. Yeah. And, um, like I, I got to, I got to be excited, saying like, "Oh my gosh!" Like I'm wearing like these like space shoes. Like you guys, you should definitely get some. Like they're super cool and comfortable. And yeah. Got to talk about that and got to talk about like favorite planets, like you know that kind of stuff. Because I was a yeah. space nerd when I was a kid. So, <laughs> um, just having little moments like that, um, really made me feel super comfortable in the you know the platform that i've been given and that the ability like it doesn't matter if kids know who i am like getting you know getting you go to the hospital with caitlin Sande um uh sandino, <laughs> sandino thank you um yeah. getting to go with the hospital with her you know she's bringing her gold medal in and i'm just like hey i'm like you know <laughs> i'm on i'm injured but i'm here yeah. too i'm like <laughs> a, a, a bubble nfl player um yeah. But at that point, it doesn't even it doesn't matter because you're getting to, you're you're spending the time to go and and see uh, see them um, and they're they're happy to see you. So at, th at that point, it's not about like I I had to make a humility check. It's like it's not about me. It's about getting to go see these guys. So and you do a great job at it, Johnny. And Thank the you. credibility that you don't need credibility from a team because your credibility comes from your heart because you're such a caring young man and want to help these kids smile and at the end of the day i remember jess used to always tell me daddy i feel so lonely and you know being able to show up in the midst of a day that a child might be sitting in their you know hospital room for many days to get a visitor and to receive a joy jar and stuff it's very special so thank you for using your platform in such incredible ways well i feel lucky to be able to be included in all that and you know, I'm, I'm, I get a huge advantage getting to be so close, um, just like a 20 minute drive from, from the Joy Factory. So um, I just feel lucky to be in the position that I'm in and then that you, that you and, and Kate and everybody at the office has, has welcomed me. Oh, absolutely. What's next, Kate? Uh, everybody goes through hard times. I know that um, you had some injuries, uh, but what's the hardest thing that you had to overcome in sports? Oh man. Um, yeah, injuries is one thing for sure. Um, when I was leaving high school, my senior year, I tore my ACL. And at the time, we were like a top three team in the country. Um, mm -hmm. So we had just come off of winning the California State Championship. We had hopes to, you know, try to win another state championship, try to finish, you know, in the top 10 in the nation with, you know, all my best friends were all going off to, the, to Division One programs the next year. Um, and fifth game of the year, I tore my ACL. Uh, and was out for the rest of the season. Um, having to deal with that for like the first time really gave me a perspective like, okay, well, I've always known that I love football, but this is really my time to prove 
to myself my love it's like it's not even proving to anybody else it's just proving to myself like what am i fighting for every day in physical therapy in um you know in my own workouts going to still trying to go to the team meetings um like i'm i'm proving i'm i'm just proving this to myself that this is what i'm willing to to do to continue to keep playing um you know i was lucky to go to nebraska uh, when things didn't go, work out over there i transferred to a couple schools and i ended up at UNLV and after four games there I got a season ending injury in my other knee um, and that was very hard to deal with because it felt like it was one of those things that I was like just right on the edge of being able to come back um, so it was a whole felt like a whole different experience and then you know like I like I said with Minnesota I, I ended up breaking my ankle um, and you know guys go through injury my story isn't any different than you know over half the league probably um, but going through going through these injuries you know every single time you do it you have to ask yourself okay is, you know i know what i'm gonna have to do to go forward to keep playing am i willing to do that and you know for me every every time the answer has been yes um but i know like just you know going through the physical therapy is just in itself is tough and i know you go through super hard physical therapy too like what is what's the hardest thing that you have to do in physical therapy uh probably like I like have to like shut off my brain. Like when I like, I like when I like me like personally. I like to like get like so like if I had to pick, I would probably like to like do like hard workouts. Like get my like, get sweaty and stuff. But like sometimes my therapist says like no, we have to work on your hand or something, and it's hard to like probably it's more like hard probably like to like shut off my brain and like change my mindset and I get me ready for that kind of stuff like realizing that that stuff still is like more important than all all the other stuff that I'm able to do yeah no I definitely know what you mean um the stuff that like is really easy to go really hard in like Mm -hmm. um you know if you're if you're just like for for me when I was going going for my ankle I loved upper body days because I knew that you know I could keep my upper body really strong but then when they wanted me to do ankle stuff, like the stuff that I really had to work on, like, you know, single leg stuff, it was like, ugh, can't I just like get a really good workout in other ways, you know? So I can imagine that's probably the same thing. It seems to be like the little things that are a lot harder than the, the stuff that you would think is, is really hard. Well, you oh. really are a testament of Nigu there, Johnny, thinking about how many times you've been injured and your, your fight to come back and your will to come back is very, very impressive. So. Well, thank you. You know, like I said, it's not something that, you know, um a whole lot of the league has has done as sure. well so i think you know every a, a whole lot of guys in in the nfl and throughout professional sports and even not professional sports and college sports um they they live the negu mindset as well so um just you know that more re- that much more reason to try to spread it throughout the uh throughout you know my sphere of influence yeah all right cater what's next what what was your greatest accomplishment in sports Oh man, that's a tough one. Um, in terms of like accolades, um, I guess winning the state championship in high, in high school. Um, I haven't I haven't won like a championship since then. Um, mm-hmm. We got to go to um, the state championships in junior college. Uh, we played up a team against a team up north, and we ended up losing the state championship. So that was like my next closest chance of getting you know winning your last game. In, in a really good season is the best feeling in the world. It, you know, it means that you didn't get knocked out of the playoffs or didn't get lo- losing the championship and losing, winning that final game when you're actually having a good season and you make the playoffs means that you probably won the championship. Yeah. Um, so my last experience of doing that is actually only in high school. So, um, and, but in, you know, individual accomplishments are really nice to, to get and to, um, you know, have your name be said, but at the end of the day, every single person will would trade all of those for um, a, a championship and at the highest level of their sport. You know, mm-hmm. um, so I'd say, yeah, winning winning a championship is is better than anything else I've done. Uh, what what would you say to a fourteen year old kid who his dream is to play in the NFL? Um, so what am I going to say to like you? Yeah. <laughs> um, man, uh, I think my whenever I get to speak to kids about 
what I've done to get to the league, what I've done to, you know, maximize my potential in, in you know, my sports career is always um, to do the work that other people aren't willing to do. Um, there, are, there are so many um, people playing sports that when they're done with practice, when they're done with like their team mandatory practice, you know, let's say you're growing up and you have practices on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I have little games on the weekend or something. Mm -hmm. um, if, you're, if you're practicing for those two hours and not any other time before your game and not putting any other effort, you know, energy towards it, you know, you're not going to be able to maximize your potential and reach your potential. Um, it's all about spending that extra time and bringing other people along with you. Um, I have guys that I went to high school with, played college ball with, that I was able to push forward through, um, you know, workouts that weren't mandatory stuff that uh, I was the one like leading it. Uh, and they did the same for me. Um, some of my best teammates were the ones that that got me, you know, off the couch and on the football field just to get a couple extra reps. So I, my, my biggest um, uh, piece of advice to any kid who's, or any, at any level, um, trying to make it to the next level is to do the work that's not, that other people aren't willing to do, do the work that's not mandatory. Yeah, such great wisdom. Yeah. Uh, now I have some fun questions. <laughs> um, what time do you set your alarm? These days, um, I set three alarms, 7 o'clock, 7.05, and 7.10. And I really never need, like, the other two alarms, but at least to wake up. But sometimes if I wake up, I'm, I'm just, I'll be lazy. Like, grab my phone, start looking at, looking at stuff, if I, stuff I miss in the night. And then when I, when I hit that first or second alarm, like, okay, now it's time to finally get out of bed. <laughs> um, yeah, with, with our team schedule right now with the Browns, um, they're on Eastern time. So I need to get up a little bit earlier to make sure that I'm getting getting stuff done at the same time as everybody else, you know, on the East Coast. Mm. How um, about you? How do you get up? Me? Um, I like eight, eight, um, seven, thirty, eight. That's a pretty good time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, what what's on your pregame playlist? Oh man, pregame playlist. Um, I like to make a different pregame playlist for every year. Uh, and I'll add to that list um, throughout like the season. So if I look at like my pregame playlist for something like 2016 or 2017, let's see. Uh, I have pregame 2018 right here. Uh, I have some Young the Giant. Young the Giant's my favorite band. They're from Irvine. Um, I have some Bishop Briggs. Um, she's a really good singer who's, I, I don't really go for like the really heavy, um, like rock out stuff. I kind of like to keep it a little bit more mellow before the game because then I get to really like spike my adrenaline uh, when I get there, get out there on the field for, you know, the, the early plays rather than trying to get too high energy before the game. That's what kind awesome. of music uh, you listen to before like it, workouts? Uh, I like kind of like, I call it like, I like uh, kind of like rap music kind of. Uh, like there's like on my um, phone, there's um, Madden music. Oh, yeah. it's, like, it's like the Madden whole like playlist of all of the songs on Madden. I listen to that. Uh, I listen to um, Will Smith. He uh, and then my dad and me would listen to like Paul McCartney, uh, the Beatles, and all that stuff. Some good choices right there. Yeah. <laughs> you sure you're only 14, Kate? <laughs> listen to some 90s Will Smith rap. I love it. Yeah, exactly. Fresh uh, fruit. And my last question is uh. What's your favorite football movie? Um, it, a pretty easy answer for me. It's Remember the Titans. Um, I love that movie. Um, growing up, I had a huge crush on like Hayden Panettiere. Not like that age, but like older Hayden Panettiere. <laughs> um, so she didn't get to that. That was like one of her first movies. Uh, Denzel, Donald Faison, like all these guys that ended up becoming huge names. Um, uh, just was it's it's a great movie and then it's cool to see all these guys who had like very very early on in their careers yeah. um mm -hmm. have to play like the high school players um yeah and uh, it's just i never get tired of that movie i haven't seen it in so long i'm gonna have to watch it tonight <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite i like remember the titans too my yeah. um yeah it's on disney plus we i watched that a lot too it's Perfect. really good yeah I, I know where to watch it then <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I, I just want to say, um, thank you again for, um, being on this channel. It's, it's really cool to talk to you.
I appreciate it, man. Thanks for bringing me on. I, I appreciate the invite. It's I'll, I'll take any chance I get to talk to you, man. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Well, Cade, great job. But Johnny, thank you again. We truly are honored that you are, um, choose to be on our team and choose to help kids fighting cancer never, ever give up. We can't wait to see you. We wish you nothing but the greatest success on and off the field. We'll always be cheering for you. And we, again, thank you for cheering for kids and encouraging them to need you. So we wish you the best. And thank you again for being on with chatting, on, chatting with Cade. And I uh, hope you just have a great season, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Well, thank you, guys.